Hi, everybody. This is Angie, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukulo webinar. Uh, it is February 28th, 18th, uh, 2023. We have a special guest today, uh, Robin Jelinek, and she will be um, channeling a group consciousness, Athena. Um, for announcements today, we are um, going to be doing um, our next scheduling our next class. If you are interested in um, uh, having a class, uh, par participating in any of the classes, if some of the classes that we're going to be offering, crystals and rocks, galactic energy healing, consciousness, level three. If you were interested in any of those, send an email to classes at hukulo.org. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we have our special guest, Athe um, Robin, here. And Robin, could you say hello? Hi. Nice to see everyone. Okay. Uh, we are going to start with some blessings today. Um, uh, Krishna Priya is not able to be here today. She has a very special um, like uh, event happening in India where she is. So she asked me to fill in. So um, just be patient with me while I work through um, going, uh, being the host today. So um, Athena, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm Robin right now. So thank you. That's right. I'll thank tell you, you a little bit much. about. Do you want to hear a little bit about Robin and how this occurred in me? Yes, please. Thank okay. you so much. Sounds good. Um, well, I, you know, over my lifetime, I would say uh, I have always been interested in spirituality. I, from my early twenties, I've been reading about it and uh, studying different books. I like to talk and look about mediumship. Uh, you know, just about every avenue of it, I was interested in. So I've done a great deal of reading and study over my life, and um, I just knew that I had a curiosity about something else out there besides just me as a human. Am I going to end or does this go on? That was kind of some of the questions that I would have. And so over that 20 year period of uh, reading and studying, um, I would say right about the time that my children left for college, which was a big part of my life, uh, I had what was uh, what's known as a Kundalini awakening. So um, that was a big confirmation for me that everything that I had read about or studied um, the chakra system, I, you know, I heard them, I felt them, each one get pierced as the snake rose. And uh, it was quite a uh, shocking and uh, enlightening experience to have that happen. And so after that happened, I went through probably what was some people get and some don't, but I think a lot of people do get it, what would be referred to as the dark night of the soul. So I would say the next two, three years, there was a lot of emotional upheaval, a lot of sadness, loneliness, uh, loss of interest in everyday things that used to bring me pleasure, like shopping, going out to eat, you know, didn't really care, not that I didn't fix myself up, but just didn't really have that um, luster to life that it used to have. And so that was kind of, in, for a while, I thought, I'd like to put this genie back in the box, but of course, there's no way of doing that. Once it's awakened, it's awake, and you're not going to put it back. So uh, that went on for a couple of years, and I had a couple other experiences with the risings where it came down through the top of my head. And again, it was a really... Um, impacting, you know, lasting experience after you have something like that happen. And I would say after that, the energy kind of balanced out. It took, you know, about two to three years. And, you know, I gradually felt like I was enjoying life again. And, and what I've learned over the last 25 years, because I was in my early 40s when that occurred, and I'm in my early 60s now. So this Kundalini rising, for me anyway, and for a lot of people is not an overnight event, it's something that goes over many years. And it probably is in the process over many lifetimes. So you don't really Really know when it's going to happen to you or why it happens. Some people can slip and fall on the ice and set off their kundalini where others can meditate for 10 years and beg for it and never have it happen. So there's really no uh, rhyme or reason uh, as to how this is called to yourself, other than I, I'm sure it's something from lifetime to lifetime that's been an endeavor that you've been after. So uh, once that kundalini awakened, there wasn't an awareness in me, not that I shared it with anyone else, but I knew that I was going to become a channeler. I don't know why, but I just knew that it was going to happen. And I was pretty knowledgeable about channeling. I had a friend that was a channeler. And so it wasn't anything that uh, was foreign to me. Uh, I would say, um, you know, about two years ago or so, I was 
again, the Kundalini energy is something that it goes in phases where it'll be very active and you'll feel a need to meditate and you'll have a lot of automatic mudras, uh, lots of kriyas where your body is moving and, and you're not doing it. And it really feels good because it's almost like somebody picking your legs up and swinging them. You know how good that feels. Yeah. So your whole body is doing that uh, automatically. And so I started to have a lot of that about two years ago. Um, and the automatic mudras were really significant, almost like uh, really graceful dance type movements and which I don't have at all. And so, um, you know, a few weeks into that starting, um, I felt myself sit up and uh, something breathed me and then announced itself. And it didn't speak at that moment. Um, it was just an awareness that something had entered my body and it didn't feel threatening. It didn't feel like there was anything wrong. And she just announced that I was a person that wasn't always very confident. I was chubby growing up. I got picked on a lot. I came from six girls in a family. And so confidence was not something that I had much of. And so I was kind of posing that to myself that day in the meditation, like, you know, when am I going to get it? I'm, you know, I'm almost, I'm 60 years old and I'd really like to feel confident. And so when, when that breath came into me and my body straightened up, I thought, oh, oh, this isn't me. This is what it feels like to be confident. And that was her announcement of herself. So probably about two weeks after that, uh, we met my son uh, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and it was on a full moon night. And um, we were looking out at the water and I had told him about some of the experiences I was having and that, you know, I felt this, uh, breathe something breathed me and he said uh, he noticed my body moving a little bit and he said well why don't we ask him to come out and talk you know so that was the night that they arrived and it was very um choppy and difficult and I sweated a lot and um I, I just couldn't believe that something was actually coming out of my voice box that wasn't me and even though it it sounds really strange. It didn't feel strange. So I, what I would say to all the listeners is that, you know, you don't realize it, but you're channeling as a human. There's something coming through you in the body that you are in, and that's your consciousness. And when you become a channeler, something else uses your body, and then it comes in through you the same way as you're coming through you. So um, it doesn't feel all that different. The bookcase isn't going to trip over, and there's going to be, you know, tip over, and there's not going to be birds flying through the room or anything that's going to notify you that you are, in fact, doing it. Um, so I, I would say that's probably how it gets missed a lot of times because people think that it's going to be something really otherworldly and that you're going to be, um, you know, so aware of it. And it's just this real natural, um, real good feeling uh, thing that occurs. So that was when it first started. It's changed quite a bit in two years. I've done lots of sessions with people all over the world. I'm on lots of different uh podcasts and talk shows. I do regular podcasts under Athena and Truth. I have a YouTube under Athena and Truth. And so in a very short time, it expanded at a rapid rate. And this is something that they told me from the beginning. I said, geez, I'm kind of old to be having this happen. I don't know how much I'm going to get done. And they said, don't worry, we're going to move at a fast pace. And I will tell you that not all channelers have their Kundalini awakened. Some, some do. And those that do awaken the Kundalini often do become channelers. It's something that kind of goes along with that phenomena. But there are people who have not awakened their Kundalini will need that become channelers but I'm told by the group that this really brings and you're going to uh, notice when we get into the channeling part of this that this energy that I'm carrying when they're in is very um engaging and it's and it brings you right up to it so um, when I'm doing sessions with people they people will say to me well how do they know how do they believe what you're doing and it's like you know yourself when you feel it and what they do is they engage with the high part of you and they bring you right up to that high level that you exist in and all that is and you're, you kind of leave your human behind for a little while and of course uh, you know that so sorry can you still hear me I had something come yeah. across my screen yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, you know, that that's giving you a little bit of an idea of, you know, what has occurred. I don't know. I've got something on my screen. There we go. Um, and it's really feels good to people and they're able to receive things from themselves that at, when they're stuck in their human emotion, that they're really not able to, um, you know, it, it, when you're in emotion, you're really unconscious, basically. And when you're in your high self, you're very conscious, you're picking, you're choosing, you're deciding what it is you're going to think about how you're going to feel because you know that in every moment you're creating. And so you don't want to make the mistake of living uh, in an emotional state that is going to be sending out uh, messages to all that is that are maybe in a uh, negative emotion that aren't going to bring you something that you're really wanting to get. So that just gives you kind of an overview of uh, what I do and how this uh, phenomena occurs and 
I hope that gives you some background. It does. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, can you just give us a small idea who the Athena group consciousness are? Who are yes. they? Yep. Um, Athena is uh, the uh, consciousness of Athena, the goddess. And so people always think, well, is that a real person or it's uh, it's really the essence or uh, what she represented and 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 the consciousnesses that are coming through with her are um, like level or similar to her. And so um, it's a very confident energy. It's a woman in her power. It's a woman that can be both feminine and both uh, authoritative or uh, not afraid to speak out or to be powerful and feel that her feminism is somehow compromised by that. And so uh, it's just the divine feminine energy really uh, in its purest state. Great, thank you so much for that explanation. Um, let's go ahead and do some blessings. First, and then we will go ahead and get right into the channeling. Um, let's have uh, Yana, Wendy, and um, uh, let's do uh, Yana and Wendy. And then if anyone else, just text me or email in the <coughs> chat if you want to do a blessing. This is the Arcturians. And and the, the meaning is may only only celebrate your own life within and it is time now to fully embrace that within your own beingness by uh, inviting your higher self in and uh, going to the level of love within your heart and embrace that. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Atahi in Yuroko and Narakahira to Ur and Yarakahishi, Jua Mahia Kahata, and Oro to Hira Mahira Naha. O in Yarakahira Mahoro to Hira in Yurkohoro, Naratahira Tatuhir in Yurko, Hirabara, and Yurko to Hirara, Pahira Tura, near Tahira Taho. Namaste. We are bringing you further up to your higher consciousness as well. Those who join now and those, those who join later, they are intended to meet fully their own energy and their own power so that they too can feel the divine feminine within themselves. It is our blessing to be here more fully with our conjoined energies. Blessings. That's Athena too. <laughs> <laughs> I've channeled her before, so. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, I know that you told me that you don't need much time to prepare, so um, whenever you're ready. What is it you would like to talk about today? Give us a topic or something of interest that we may go into with you. Is To start off, is there a message for the group and the people listening now and in the future? The message is there is a rise in consciousness that is occurring. It is one of the reasons that we have joined this one and that many are being woke up or enlightened, as you would put it as a human, you see. As more and more humans start to realize what it is happening upon the earth plane, what is happening? They're starting to realize that they are the creators of the experiences that they are in. They're starting to realize that they do not need to live in suffering and pain and misery or in lack anymore, you see because it is that way of thinking and it is that way of following in the masses that is creating all of the issues or problems that you're having upon the earth plane. But don't worry, all that is is receiving every charge of energy that everybody is having and it is rising it in love to the highest possible degree, you see. So there is not a thought that we receive or a charge of energy, in other words, that we receive that is not transmuted to love, that is not received 
in the value that we know that you intended it in. What do you really want when you are sad? You want to be happy. What do you really want when you are lonely? You want company, you see. You want these things and you do not always uh, know how to get them. Problem with a human is that as they have their negative emotions, they become lodged in them. And as Robin was talking to you earlier, before you opened this panel, she said to you that there are two ways to be. There's you and your human that can remain in unconsciousness of your emotional states, or there is you and the high part joined you from all that is that will consciously pick and choose the way that it feels. And why does it do this? because it knows that how you feel, how you emanate, is what is received by all that is. And as all that is receives that, it returns experiences and people and things into your life that are a match to exactly what it is that you have sent to it, you see. But when you get lodged in your human and you are unconscious and you are not implementing this joining to the high part of yourself, you're gonna live in a little bit of misery, a little bit of lack, a little bit of misunderstanding, and also victimization by the way which doesn't exist. Victimization is you believing that somehow something is happening to you that you don't have any control over. That's just not true. It's false. It's a false belief that you have, you see. There is nothing that a human is experiencing that they are not attracting to themselves. And once we go through the teachings with those that we are in session with, they quickly come to the realization of what it is they have been doing unknowingly that has created a life that is perhaps not to their liking. Thank you so much for that. There are a lot of people who um, believe their belief system is all of those things, that they are a victim, that they are, not, you know, the victim of their circumstances. So um, to move the people through and help them to see that there is more to that. Let's talk about that for a moment. There's a good topic you've brought up. Yes? Yes. 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 Beliefs. Where do they come from? Do you know how many lives you have lived? Do you know all of your lineage, your mothers, your grandmothers, your grandfathers? It could go on and on and on. All of this is woven or kept within the DNA that is stored within the body that is you, you see. It's why you pop out these children and wonder, how did I get this one? And what's going on with this one over here, you see. And some of what the human being will have in their DNA is not just what they have viewed in the lineage or what is in the blood or in the attachment that they have had to these lineages, but will be in the lessons that they decide to heal for the entire lineage. Perhaps it is alcoholism. Perhaps it is uh, anger. Perhaps it is controlling aspects, whatever it is that the human is struggling with. Sometimes you decide that you will be the one that will overcome or heal once and for all this piece or part that is stored in the DNA, that gets transferred from one lineage to the next, you decide to be the one that's going to heal it, you see. You can heal it for your entire line. And then when you die and you drop the bags that are you, when the next human comes along that's in your lineage and picks them up, it might be minus a few things that they're not needing or wanting, you see. Humans think they came to the earth plane to be rich, to find the perfect mate, to live in the perfect house, and to have the perfect life. And really, what you came here for is growth and expansion. You came here to heal those things that have been dragging through the lineage from one lifetime to the next. These are part of the reasons you are here, you see. And once you can really understand this, you can really relax into life. You can really start to find the joy in the life experiences that you are having. And know that, notice these things where you become out of alignment or they hook you or tag you, you see. Notice when you are tripped in anger or your control aspect kicks in and you don't seem to be able to control that then this is what you do. You don't blame yourself, you love your human. How can you blame that container for every life that's been lived and every lineage it's been a part of? You can't. And when you start to blame it and judge it and condemn it, it lowers in its vibratory level and it can no longer reach the high part of yourself, which is waiting patiently to union with you, to help you, to assist you, to have you become and to get the life that you came here to get. But what do you do? You stay in your human, you stay in your negativity. You decide that you are this lowly thing that has done this thing that's unforgivable, that's judged and condemned. And in that low tone that you hold yourself in, you can't get to the good stuff. So how do you get there? You love that human no matter what it does. You're worthy no matter what you do. You came here as a human to experience life. Did we say you came here to do it perfect? Did we say you would never make a mistake as a human? 
We did not. And you are to love that human for all of its emotions, for all of its feelings, and then say to it, thank you for that. I know what I want now because of that. I want to feel this. Thank you for that experience. I know what I want. I did it the wrong way. And now I'm going to do it this way. Thank you, human. Thank you, human. And as you do this, your human will rise in the recognition that it has served you. It is a tool that is serving you. Why would you badmouth it, condemn it, and treat it as though it were unworthy? You are the one that has asked the human to come and be here for you to flow through and to experience life. And you wanna be the master of it. And the master has to be allowed to join it. And when you join your human in mastery, you know that the human will emote. You know that it will feel pain. You know that you are on a contrasting plane, but you will pick and choose how you will feel about it. You will decide in every moment, in every experience, I feel this way, but I want to feel this way. I feel this, but I know I really want this. And you know you are the emanator to all that is. And you know that the motion that you pick is what you will receive. If you decide to condemn another and judge another, they did it. I saw them. They were bad. They cheated. They stole. They're wrong. If you do this, you will be received in the like energy of them. As you notice another who is wrong and you condemn it, you become the very one that you despise. Very, very powerful words. Thank you. What did we tell you was going to happen here today? This energy that runs through this one has ability to bring you up to have you connect to the high part of yourself. It's a re-remembering. It's called turning the lights on, you see. We as humans, part of what the, a portion of what our problem is, is that even though we may have this information, we, even though we may have this knowledge of, you know, that we can be higher, that we can do that, but we still get stuck. Yes. Oh, we we still get stuck in the cycle. You. you want a remedy, do you not? Yeah. Yes. When you became a woman, uh, you went from being a little girl, and then there were changes that happened in you. Did you go looking for them? Did you, or did it just very gradually or very naturally unfold? And one day you realized, I'm interested in sex. I'm interested in having a family. I'm interested in this sex or that sex. A change happened, didn't it? You didn't, did you do anything? No. And everyone on the earth plane thinks that's just a bodily change. And you know what that really is? That's called a shift in consciousness. That's what changed. And we want to tell you that this natural change that's coming is available to all. There's no exclusion. Everyone's included. And as more and more reach the higher levels of vibratory tone or the way that they think and feel, no one's getting left behind because that hum, that vibration will start to reverberate through every being and every being is going to feel it. And every being is eventually going to match it. They're going to rise once that tipping point occurs, which it has occurred, you see. And so there's probably a lot of you out there that are thinking, I have to meditate. I have to be really good. I better not have a glass of wine. I better not swear. I better be perfect otherwise. I will get the prize that everybody else is getting. And that's just not how it is. Every one of you is of love. Every one of you is worthy. Every one of you will rise, you see. And we want to make that abundantly clear to all of those, because one of the reasons we are here is because there is a little bit of a fallacy somewhere in this metaphysical rise where humans are being taught that if they are human, that they are not going to be accepted or that they're gonna be left behind. And we're here to alleviate that worry right here, right now. When you join to the high part of yourself by realizing that you are worthy, no matter what you do, no matter how someone judges you or no matter what experience you think you have messed up, when you adopt this idea that you are human and this is what humans do, that rise in consciousness is a gift to you in the love of self. And that is what love of self is. Love of self is accepting 
your humanness. This one Robin that is doing the channeling right now, the biggest recognition she has gotten in all of it that she would give to all of you is you are perfect as you are. You can make mistakes. You don't have to do everything right. And in that love of self, the spirit will meet you. You see. Thank you. Megan has a question for you. Yes. Hi, Athena. Thank you for being here. My question is, how, how do we as human um, lift the veil so we remember who we are, why we are here? Yes. It seems like there's no easy way. Yes. Uh, we have given the explanation in some of our podcasts and recordings that we have done that you are in a time or a period of change. And what does that mean? 3D reality, there is an unknowingness, an unbelieving, uh, an idea that some people are lucky and some people are victimized. Some people have money and some people don't. Some people are happy and some people are not happy. This is all part of the 3D reality or the lower dimensional thinking and believing, you see. And so as you ask this question, there's going to be uh, the love of self is the way. This is the way. But what we want you to understand is that just as you became a woman, or many of you are watching, we don't know if there are men, we have our eyes closed, but they became men too, yes? But just as this change came over you, where you went from childhood to adulthood, it's very natural. You didn't have to do anything. And this is going to be much the same. We want you to relax. Here's the problem with a human. How am I going to do it? Uh, how hard do I have to work? How much do I need to focus? How do I suck up all those thoughts that I shouldn't be happening? This is what a human does. And as you adopt this way of being, you're, you're already in the opposition of it because this is not the love state of self. Uh, the way to get there is this flow, this acceptance. Uh, we'll give you a little example. Robin is an avid sports uh, com uh, uh, competitor, yes? And she has played a lot of tennis, a lot of pickleball. And at times her husband is her partner. She has all the wisdom and knowledge that we give her, but she has to do her own work, as she has said, yes? And so she would go to play pickleball with her husband. And at times they would start bantering a little bit. She would miss a ball or he would criticize her or something would happen and their games would fall apart and they would readily lose, you see. She didn't like it. One day they came home and she said, what do you say when we go to pickleball tomorrow that we decide that there is no talking except for compliments, that we notice every time somebody does something that is right and that we like, and we simply disregard anything that we feel was not right and we didn't like. He said, okay, it's worth a try. Well, you can't imagine what happened on that pickleball court. Uh, they rose to the top like cream on the top of a freshly milked cow's bucket of milk, you see. They could hit nothing out. Everything went perfect. There was no sense of time. There was no worry. There was just this joy, this feeling of flow that she was in. He was in it too, you see. And when she got home, uh, we said to her, how would you like to feel that in your life? She goes, I would love it. It was effortless. I lost all sense of time. I, I, I made no effort. I didn't try. I didn't force. I didn't worry. It was like the shots just came off my paddle and there was nothing to do, you see. And we want you to understand and we are so glad you brought up this question. We're going to penetrate this into you right now. Your life is the flow state. You don't have to live it. You don't have to push it. You don't have to direct it. You don't have to worry about it. You just have to flow with it. And how do you flow with it? Ah, I love the day that it is today. I like the smell of my coffee. Ah, oh, the first drink is great. I love that too. Ah, oh, there's my husband or my mate or whatever it is over there. I like that too. Look at that flower outside. I love it. Ah, I'm going to pickleball today. Can't wait to get there. Lots of nice people to see. Plenty of fun things to talk about. This is the flow state. This is the positivity state. This is the love state that one can get into. And this is how, by the way, that thing that you asked to have happen will happen automatically. There's no work to do. There's no effort to put in. There's just this constant reminder that when you feed your universe good thoughts, good feelings, good things, it feeds you back exactly like feeling things, you see. Now, we know you're going to say something throws me off now and then. 
and it will. And this is where we go back to telling you, you have to love yourself. You have to tell your human when it has stumbled and stubbed its toe and it is in fury and it is in anger and it is in jealousy and it is in rage and it is in whatever it is in, because it's going to happen, that you turn to it and remember to say, I love you for that experience because I now know by having it, what it is I want to choose because of it. This is what your emotions are for. They're not to get stuck in. They're not to condemn. They're not to dread. They're here to let you know what your preference is. You simply have to pick it. The problem with a human is they get so stuck in the feeling of the negative emotion, in the bodily feeling of it, that they cannot release it. And they unknowingly start to regurgitate more and more experiences. And the universe keeps saying, do you want that? 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 But you keep doing it. You are the creator. You are the one that decides. That emanation, that emotion that you put out will be returned on, whether you can control it or not. So you have to become the master. The master determines by the experience I don't like the feel of that, but what do I want because of it? And this is your work as a human. And it can be done with a little bit of effort because once you start doing it, you get that ball of energy rolling. And then more and more likened thoughts onto it will come. But you have had the ball going the other way for a while and you have to clean that up. You have to gradually shift the energy. But once you do it, more and more of the good stuff starts coming. And then you start to realize, I am the creator. Oh my God, I am the creator. I can have whatever I want. I can choose. No longer are you jealous. No longer are you victimized. No longer do you look at someone with a nice car and wonder, how did they get it? You see, Thanks. this is a hard thing for a human to understand because they think that this right and wrongness, this good and bad is real stuff. And it's not. We're here to tell you. If there is a son of a gun that behaves in cheating, nasty ways, and he feels good about it, aligned to himself, it will not have a negative effect upon him because he will be emanating to all that is that good feeling of his nasty deeds. Now, we know this is difficult, and we are sorry that we are the deliverers of truth, but you are an emanator. You are a piece of the whole. You are a sovereign being that creates, and that's just how you do it. Thank you. Thank you. I know you said um, that uh, every, everyone will start having, um, uh, evolving. Yes. Uh, it, it would be a natural process. So, and how soon do you think that would kick in? Everything in your world is determined by the masses, you see. Oh. We are not the creators of your future uh, or your past. But we would tell you that the life that you stand in right now has already been lived by based upon the beliefs that you held, the lineages that you had, and how it is you were thinking. So what do you really have? You have this right here, right now moment. You, as a sovereign being, have tremendous power if you use it properly. You stand here right now and ask us, how is it going to come? How are you going to do it? We would ask you. What are you going to want for? How are you going to focus? Because one in their focus has the power of millions, you see. This Thank is how you. it happens. You have to hold your focus. You have to know that it matters. You have to be the creator in your own experience. The problem with you humans is you look around at the ones that you want to point your finger at, the racism, ah, the nasty ones, the ones that do everything wrong and don't realize that you are now the emanator of that. That's your problem, you see. That's what's holding everything up or slowing it down. They are bad because they don't like this race or that race. How is that love? How is that not the same as the one that does not love the race? You see, this is what you have to realize. You have to realize what sovereignty is. You are responsible for you and only you. You are not changing anyone by the view that you hold of them. The only one you're changing is you. And as you add you to the masses, you're ruining the masses then, you see. Thank you. Thank you. Is that clear? Yes, very clear. Thank you so much. Really appreciate this. We are glad you appreciate it and you enjoyed it. Thank you. Lily, had, Lily Pad has a question. Hello. Um, Hello. 
I was wondering, well, I was wondering if, are you Athena from the Greek mythology? The same one, from? different one. Who are you? Where are you from? Can you tell me your origin? You know your name, somebody gave it to you, yes? Do you know your origin? No one knows their origin. It would be a lie to say that. No one knows. We know why you don't know, because we are all one thing. We all emanate from the same source as individual expressors of the one thing, you see. I carry with me, as I said, the energy or the composition or the, we're looking for a term that a human could understand that would portray to Robin what it felt like to be a female in her confidence. And so really she called forth the energy or the stream of consciousness of which Athena was a part of, you see. You're part of a stream of consciousness too. Thank you. I have another question. So what was the purpose to have, um, who created the 3D reality? Hmm. We did, all of us, or, I mean. Uh, the only way that, that the one thing uh, can know itself in contrast, you see, contrast. This is the way you know duality or uh, 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 what you deem as good and bad, right and wrong, uh, uh, positive and negative. Uh, this is uh, an aspect or a uh, part of the universe that is a universal uh, experience, you see. Yeah. So in order for oneness to experience itself in all things, in all ways, this contrast is necessary. I think any of you would agree that when you look back over your lifetimes, although the good times are good, the bad times are what you had to rise from, that you had to pull yourself up from, that you had to become more from, you see. And this is the reason for the contrasting plane. Um, thank you. And another question, last question is, uh, how would I, can I, how can I, in the morning when I receive messages, how can I, I cannot have tendency to forget. And, uh, and I, uh, or sometimes when I, rem try, I remember, I trying to figure it out, but so I don't know what, how can I remember Messages and if I remember, are you talking about in a dream state or this is a regular recalling state that you uh, forget what it is you are remembering when I'm, when I'm waking up? Oh, so you're not fully awake, I uh, know, but I can so hear, are, I can, yeah, I can listen to them, whoever. Can you make it clear to us what your question is? Are you sleeping or are you awake? Um, I'm in a state of waking up. And give us what, tell us what happens to you. Well, like this morning, for example, I was waking up and, um, and, and I, one, one of the messages was breaking the mirrors. And today was M28. It's different every day, but uh, there is more information, but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have to believe in self. You have to understand that you are uh, the creator, the drawer, the picker, the chooser, the one that decides what it is will come to you and how you will receive it. There are many people who begin to get messages or start to have uh, the beginnings or the startings of uh, a connection to self. It comes in all different forms. It comes in forms of like we are a group consciousness. It comes in separate entities. Robin gets sometimes, yes. It can come uh, for you in uh, uh, the high part of yourself, you see. But your belief in it and your direction of it will be what will be the determining factor on how you will receive it. We'll give you an example. Uh, when we were trying to uh, approach Robin, it was over a period of years, we would tell you, she had lots of bodily movements but did not really understand what was going on. Once she understood what was going on, she still didn't really know how to make the complete uh, connection to where we would actually be able to vocalize or speak through her such as we are doing here now. So what finally occurred as her son invited us out, we took the that cue, yes, to uh, use her vocal box and to start speaking through her. But we would tell you that you as a human have this power, you have this uh, 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 choice or option that you can actually talk to the high part of yourself and tell it what it is that you would like to receive. Many times what happens with a human and it's a little bit happening with you is you sit there waiting 
for, for it, waiting for something to be handed to you or uh, a crumb, yes, handed or given to you, where you are the determiner, you are the one that decides what it is that you will receive and how you will receive it. So we would tell you to be very clear, to be very concise, to be very powerful, to be very believing in the idea that you can direct this energy to the way that you want to receive it. And if it is by words that you would like it, then say so. If it is by automatic, you would write it, then say so. You are to be the determiner, the decider, the picker, the chooser. You can also decide this unknowingly. You could be watching other channelers online. You could be uh, reading uh, other texts that are written by channelers and in your admiration of it, inadvertently, you may draw it to yourself, you see. So there are many ways that one can create, but we want you to really know right here, right now that you are the one that creates it by what it is you desire, by what it is you focus on and what it is you ask for and believe, by the way. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Joan has a question. Greetings, Tina. Good day. Um, I just wonder about this uh, question. Oh, if you can answer, uh, if you are a human, how would you live your life in this 3D world as a freedom, I mean, as a free being? Would you uh, give us and insight or how would you how would you uh, be a free being in this 3d i mean in the in this planet to free you i mean because we have a hard time to see this freedom yes uh, uh many times a human the biggest problem they are encountering why they don't live in freedom is fear they're afraid of not having enough money. They're afraid of getting sick. They're afraid of being lonely. Uh, we could go on and on on the list of things that keeps a human uh, caged or the bars around them, you see. And we would like to relieve all of you right here, right now, and say that uh, your life is pre pretty much predetermined by how it is that you have thought, felt, and, and lived prior to ever coming to the life that you are in. And as you stand in this now moment, you are now creating your next life and the life after, you see, based upon how it is you perceive how you believe, and the past lineages, they're all in there too. That's all part of it, you see. So what we would tell you to do is do the same thing as uh, we would tell you if you watched any of these near-death experiences where people have had a brush with death, they come back changed. They leave relationships they don't like being in. They quit jobs that they never liked anyway. They realize that there's nothing to be afraid of, that they've crossed over and found out that it's quite a nice place and that they really never die, that they really are an eternal being. And we would tell all of you here today, live life like every day is your last, because you are an everlasting being. It doesn't matter. There, everybody wants to preserve life. Don't eat this. Don't do, don't eat that. Uh, don't don't do that. It's too uh, dangerous. Uh, we would go on and on, and we would say, uh, taste it all, live it all, uh, live with the fury that you were meant to live with, the joy, the abandonment that you have, and let go of these fears of uh, well-being and money. You would be amazed at what opens up for people when they decide to live this way. And when you get into your joy and into your happiness, and you start uh, picking and choosing how it is you're going to feel about your life experiences, not that you're not going to lose people, not that you're not ever going to suffer, or that you're not going to have setbacks in your life, you are. But when you decide that you're going to be the picker, the chooser, the one that emanates a feeling that you know is getting returned on, when you adopt this way of living your life's going into flow and now you're hitting that ball and every time it's landing in and it's getting better and better and better and better and better this is how it happens you see but if you live in fear you're adding that to your universe and you're adding it to your next lifetime and you're constricting and you're opposing and you're shrinking you see that's kind of hard to do for the human because you isn't it hard to be shrunk isn't it hard to be fearful why don't you just drop the the chains and live a little while in freedom and see how that feels and see what comes to you in that space or place nobody ever does it long enough they're too afraid you see but the ones that do soar Hmm. Well, well, we'll try to free myself. We'll try to free myself. As a free being? Does that sound a like a knowing? Does that sound like a belief? 
doesn't sound like it to me. And we would say, go on and live in your chains if that's what you're most in alignment to. You can't align to something that you do not believe in, but you can take a look at self and you can take a look at where the chains are. And then you can kind of figure out in your lineage where you might've adopted those beliefs and how you might choose to feel that way, you see. But we would tell you that all of you are sane, minus the lineages and the beliefs that you're holding. You're all emanating from one source. You all have the power of gods. You all have the ability to create anything you want to create. And what prevents you from doing it is the belief that you hold that you cannot, you see. Many humans will say, where's my stuff? I wanted this. And then they start to wonder where it is. How long is it going to take? When's it going to get here? And then all of a sudden, they start thinking, well, that's too hard. I don't have enough money. No one else in my family has done that. I don't have an education. And they don't know where those thoughts are coming from. And we would say they're coming from you. They're coming from the high part of you, letting you know, yes, where your stuff is. And I'm telling you, you hold some beliefs in negativity. You hold some beliefs in lack of education. You hold some beliefs in not having enough money. You hold these beliefs, you see. This is where these negative thoughts are coming from. Clean it up. Use the information you are getting to your advantage instead of believing it as a truth. There is nothing that is coming to you that is not in support of you, that does not love you, that does not want to uplift you and help you. And that includes your negative thoughts. And we tell you when you want something, when you desire something, know that it has been given to you. Know that in all that is, it has already been received. And all you need to do is align. And what is alignment? Alignment is the love state, the flow state. I move into my happy state. I move into my appreciation state. I move into the knowing state that I can have whatever it is I want to be, do, or get to. I can do it, you see. This is the flow state that you can get into. But as you ponder, where is that thing that I desire? The universe will actually tell you. You're not going to be able to do it. You're not good enough. You don't have any education. Well, who do you think's talking to you? Who do you think it is? Do you think that there's some evil force out there giving you bad feelings? Or do you think there might be some loving source saying, hey, this is what you hold within you. Clean it up and see what you can do. Beautiful. Uh, one more question. I've been working on my Kundalini and I believe my Kundalini rise up already, but how do I see myself if my Kundalini awaken? Or is there any something that is blockaging on my Kundalini? If a or do I have awakening to... happens, yes, there will be no mistake about it. There will be the sounds of thousands of hummingbirds. There will be buzzing. There will be a piercing or what will feel like a piercing of each one of your energy centers. The noise will be unmistakable. It'll be as though a freight train has run through your body. Did you have this experience? Yes. Yes. I do. Did you feel but it me. made the complete ascent all the way to the top? Or could it possibly have veered off somewhere where you are holding energy? I, I, I had the vivid dreams that it's, uh, you know, these two blue beings helped me to uh, turn my, my, it's like a 360 degrees in my, and then my body uh, waves in my, my, my uh, vivid dreams. If it's like, it feels like real, it, it looks like real to me, the, because uh, this, and then the, there is a, a big light, I mean, I saw, and then I, I believe they, they show me my past life, but I couldn't remember. Yes. Uh -huh. Here's one thing we want you to understand about the Kundalini energy. Uh, and we are pretty qualified, we would say, to talk about it because this is a separate energy. This is not an energy. Uh, we would say that uh, the Kundalini energy or the Shakti is the uh, feminine energy that rests at the spine of every human. And then you have the uh, Shiva energy, which is at the crown or the top of the head. And then once you release that uh, Shakti energy at the bottom, it will travel up through. And what is it really doing? Uh, the wisdom and knowledge of the universe is stored within every human. It's in there. And all of you people studying, all of you people meditating, standing on your head, whatever it is you are trying to do it's in there <clears throat> it's packed up inside those centers you see and so if you get those centers open 
you're getting the wisdom and knowledge that you're searching for in those books. It's in there, you see. So what we want you to know is that this energy then, uh, once it is released, uh, the way that it will travel through the system is individualistic to each that is experiencing it. And how is that? It's based upon your lineage, your beliefs, uh, the emotions, things that are blocking the nadis or all the channels that are in the body. And there are many of them. Yes. So this energy now on her own, she has her own agenda. You're not going to influence it. You're not going to speed it up. You're not going to tell her what to do. You're not going to stop it or make it go. It's going to do its thing on its own. And so the very best thing that you could do, because we want to get this to you, because it's the same with a manifestation. Uh, ask for it. Know it's coming and shut up about it. Don't think about it anymore, because if you keep thinking about it, you're going to get the reasons why you're not getting it. And then you're going to move into negativity and you're going to dwell there and you're going to emit that negativity. And then you're going to get less because of it, you see. And your Kundalini is no different as you try to govern her or wonder what she's doing or where she's been or where she's going this is the kind of energy that will stop you up or slow you up you see so relax into the idea that you've got no work to do she's going to do the work uh, when she feels it's appropriate she will move you will feel her move there is nothing that you need to do there's no way that you're going to influence it uh no one knows what's stored within you you don't even know from every life that you have ever lived and so this process could take 10 minutes or ten thousand years Nobody knows, but it's a process that you can trust in. Chances are that it is uh, awakened in this lifetime. It will probably, uh, we haven't taken a look at you, but uh, I have to Robin do that. But it, for her, it took over 20 years for it to make its full ascent. And it is now just connecting to the Shiva energy at the top. It is finally opening the crown in Robin and with it will become more mediumship. It is something uh, that sometimes she is called upon to do. It is not really her thing. Uh, she's not gonna find your purse when you call for a session. However, we have some very important important tools that we can share with a human to make their life better. But this will be coming in that package as well. So we want you to understand really that this Kundalini energy has an uh, 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 agenda all of its own. And as it uh, is able to make its way through whatever it is is in you from every lifetime you have ever lived and the one you are in, it will gradually clean out your system. And what's going to come with that? Ah, lots of Kriyas. Yes, lots of jerky motions, sometimes vocalizations, all kinds of stuff will be happening as she is making her movements. Some Sometimes she will move uh, every week, uh, every day, and then sometimes you will have rests of a year at a time where nothing will happen. You just have to get okay with that because your not being okay with it is going to slow your process, and you're not going to, by not being okay with it, you're not going to speed it up. So we would tell you stop worrying about it. Just get into that happy state, get into that knowing state, that believing, that gratitude, that appreciation. Even though your kundalini is rising, don't become it. Don't become attached to it. You have a life to live. You are still a, a separate human aside from your spirituality. So don't become consumed within it. You want to live all the things that you came here to live. Most of the people that rise their kundalini will be in service. So we will give you that. You will probably be in some type of service or be doing something for humanity such as Robin is. This is what usually comes with the gift as it is released, you see. Wow, beautiful. Thank you. We talk at a rapid rate. What do we hear? Uh, oftentimes we will have a session with a human and they will say, I just went through 10 years therapy in one hour. You see, that's how fast we move. Uh, you will want to play these things back because Robin doesn't have a control over the flow of energy that comes through her. And oftentimes she has a hard time keeping up with the language as she is speaking it. Yes? Yes. Well, another question, would you describe my Kundalini if it's really went through? That's uh, my last question. You are us. You are able. Do you think it went through? Yes. Do you think it's hung up anywhere? Maybe. I think in my throat. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You are the knower. The one that knows. And yes, this is the area you are lodged in. So what do you do? When you have an area of trapped energy, perhaps you're not able to speak out in your behalf, perhaps you're hiding a little bit. We're not saying you are, we're just giving examples, yes? But you breathe into this center then, and you are also under the understanding when you have a tightly blocked center, which your throat is a little bit blocked, it can also affect the center above and below. 
we see. So what we would recommend when you notice that uh, you are having trouble in, in an area in your life, if it is at the base, it is generally the finances. Yes, it is in the sacral, it is generally reproduction or dance or something of an expression. If it is in the middle, it is generally your power, your ability to support yourself, your ability to believe in yourself or to educate yourself. This will often be in the middle center. And if it is in your heart, it could be that perhaps your heart was broken or perhaps your heart was full. We don't know. A center can become overactive or underactive. And we really want the center to be balanced. That is the best place to be. So it is for you as a human, as the knower, as the one to determine what it is that you have experienced in your own body, in your own life, and for you to know that I don't speak out, or I don't feel love, or I don't feel powerful, or I don't feel like I can express myself in dance or in movement. Now you know I'm in a black center. That's how you know. And so then you start working on that center and you start asking the high part of yourself to assist you in a flow of energy to open that. You breathe into it. You imagine it expo uh, ex expanding. You imagine the petals of it laying open. You imagine it starting to rotate and to move. And you work that center primarily, the one that you think is black, uh, maybe off and on for a week or two. And then as you start to feel better, then you start to run all the centers again and you start to notice whether there's a heavy pulse. It'll feel much like an infected finger. If you held your finger upside down, it was infected, it would throb a little bit, wouldn't it? Well, a black center is much the same. It gets very clogged, very laden with emotion, energy. And so it will become, as you breathe into it, you'll feel a very heavy pulse there. And this is how you will be able to determine whether the center is in fact black or open. The same. I see. Okay, well, thank you. Alex, some money. Wendy has a question. Uh, yes, hello, greetings, Athena Collective. Uh, the question that I have is, um, many of us have been told that we are divine feminine way showers and um, we are being asked to put ourselves out there to be in the public. And so I would like to um, find, as we are doing this, um, I would like to find any messages or additional guidance that you can provide to us at this time. Uh, we are not fans of separating divine energy from uh, uh, male energy. Right. Granted, it's all. balanced. It yes. must be balanced, uh, but nonetheless. You are both male and female but prior to coming uh, to this environment that you are in yes and yes. so it really doesn't matter uh we never want to have the feeling of us against them or uh us being different or separate from anything else because you are not you are all same you see uh, that is the biggest advice that we would give you uh in the endeavor that you are on what is it exactly that you are wanting to know from us or that you are asking we are not clear if you have any guidance for the direction when we are uh, presenting ourselves to the public, so to speak, that are not awakened yet or, or that oh. are coming into their awakening. Uh, we would tell you to shut your mouth about it. <laughs> That's what we would tell you. When you notice another one that is not awakened, do you realize you have gone to sleep yourself? Mm. We want you to look at every being in love. We want you to look at every being as the highest possible thing that they are. Because when you do this, sometimes when they can't see themselves that way and another views them that way, that's enough for them to wake up, you see. Whenever you view another as being not awake or disconnected or lower than anything else, you have now become that. This is something we covered earlier in the discussion when we started this program today. Yes. We want you to be the love, be the light, but not the determiner of who is the love and the light or who is awake and who is not or who should follow and who should not. Because as we told you, this is an evolutionary process that each piece of the whole is on. And you are not here, whether you think it or not, to influence it or to speed it up or slow it down or change it in any fashion. Every single one of you is a sovereign being. Every single one of you is on a path all of your own. But make no mistake about it, your emanation matters. What it is that you're sending out to all that is in the masses matters because this is what is making the shift occur or happen, you see. So you have to be real careful how you do it. You can't think that you're doing it right and they're doing it wrong. You can't think that I'm going to run around and influence everybody into it because you're not. And you're noticing of somebody not having something that you think somehow you have. We're not saying you. We're just saying in general. This is not yes. directed personally. You're not getting anywhere. You're not getting what you want. 
People have think that in racism, they're going to march all over and they're going to point their finger at all you racist people that are wrong. And they feel hateful as they do it, but they don't recognize the hate in them. They feel justified. If you feel justified, you better step back and take a good look at yourself because there's no justification for a negative emanation because it's getting returned on right back to you and right back to the mass consciousness of all that is. So we would tell you, however you do it, do it respectfully, do it with love, do it with, this is how I emanate, but never point your finger at another person or never tell a person that that's how they should emanate. Thank you, thank you for that. Um, I appreciate that guidance very much so. Um, my next question is um, out of body astral travel. Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendations for being more of the one? I get a lot of dreams and so I'm, I know that I'm getting my own guidance and I'll often hear my own guidance, mm -hmm. but also as you can just tell from sometimes my thought processes are in the way. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so if you can give me any insights and I'm sure there's others who want to do out of body astral travel. Yes. Um, so appreciate any additional guidance. Can there. I ask you what it is that intrigues you or that you are invited to want to do a, uh, out of body astral travel? Is there not to, enough travel? Do you not have enough travel here? <laughs> uh, the out of, well, yes, but the out of body astral travel, what intrigues me about that is connecting in more with the stars and the universe and the galactic realms along with um, my own Akashic records. Yes. Oh. Primarily my own Akashic records. <laughs> Robin's looking for a way to let us express this. Uh, too. <laughs> huh. It's very difficult for a human to understand that everything, not just humans, that is accessible to you has been created by you. And that includes your angelic realms, that includes your Akashic records, that includes your astral planes, that includes your earthly plane, all of it, you see. And so we find it kind of funny when humans will say they want to, and really what you're saying, believe it or not, is you're trying to enter into a stream of consciousness where those beliefs are held so that you can now be a part of them. You see, is it real? You answer the question. Some think it's real. And so there is a stream of consciousness that exists and you want to enter it. So we'll give you that tool so that you have the knowing and the understanding that there's not this door that's being opened just to you by the practice that you do, that there is actually those that believe that this exists and therefore it does, you see. And that's the way of everything in the universe. Changes it a bit, doesn't it? So yeah. you wanna drop into a stream of consciousness. That's what you wanna do. So this is what you focus on. I would like to go to the stream of consciousness of the Akashic records, where all those that believe in them are, where we can all read them, look at them, talk about them. Many don't believe it, believe it or not. And they don't see them and they don't read them. So this idea that a human has about reality is a little bit mixed up or confusing, you see. Because everything is a creation. Everything is a thought form caused by experiences and combinations of expressions that is being played out or uh, available to you, you see. It's why when we talk to humans, they, some humans like to ask us about this study or that study, smoking's bad, drinking's bad, overweight is bad, this is bad, I know it is, you see. Well, one thing we know is that if you drop into that stream of consciousness and you adopt that belief, by God, it will be true for you, you see. You can decide. And there's a lot of people in that stream of consciousness. And let, what, let me tell you what happens. The more people that believe in something, the thicker that stream gets, the bigger it gets, and the more powerful it gets, and the easier that you are pulled into it. And the more that there are getting it, 
It's happening. It's real. They're getting sick because the masses are adding. They're dumping into that water of that stream like they just can't suck enough of it up. You know what we would give the advice to all of you today? You are an individual sovereign being with a universe that's yours. It's yours. And you can add exactly what you want to it. You don't have to go into the masses. You don't have to adopt their beliefs. You don't have to believe their studies. You don't have to drop into that water, that stream of consciousness. We know we are veering a little bit from the topic, but we wanted to really give you this analogy and this understanding so that you could really understand what creation is and how deeply it goes and what you say is real. Doggone it, it's real. It's just a mass of energy that have joined together in unity of that thing. And therefore it is. What do you think of that? I agree with it. I, I find that I- You know why you agree with it? Let us tell you <laughs> that. Because you have a guidance system. And you know what? We just wanna make this point to you because we hope that you're enjoying this uh, exchange, particularly you and us, because this is you talking to you. This is how a session goes. This is why it's so believable and a match to you because you know the energy of you, you see. Yes. <laughs> We're not magicians. We are merging with the high part of you and giving you what it is you have asked for in a term that you can embody or accept, you see. Yes, it makes me quite happy. <laughs> yeah, I would be happy. You feel pretty good, don't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> How do you like the high part of yourself? How do you like feeling in the flow, in the connected state, in the magnificence of what you really are? It feels amazing. It feels like uh, running off to, you know, go get an ice cream cone or something enjoyable, yes. a glass of wine. <laughs> so we are not poo-pooing your endeavor of astral travel. You are an experiential being. Get a stream you want to jump, in, jump into and jump in there and swim around. That's why you're here. That's why creation is here. But don't get lost in the idea that that's real and that's not real because... There ain't none of it really real, you see? Yes. <laughs> kind of funny, isn't it? Kind of is. <laughs> Makes you wonder if this is even happening right now, doesn't it? Oh, there's been many a time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Have fun with it. Thank, thank you very much. Enjoy it, yes. <laughs> many blessings to you. And to you. Um, we're going to take a couple YouTube questions. Um, <clears throat> hey, Matt, Wally asks, what is your connection to the goddess Athena? What is her quality? Uh, her quality is confidence uh, and uh, the ability uh, to uh, be in your power and not feel as though you have to shrink or be diminished or uh, that you are somehow uh, broady or too bold in order to be in your power. Um, uh, this... Uh, embodiment of Athena through Robin is, uh, it's not offensive, we hope, yes? No. But there's probably not one of you out there that does not doubt the confidence or the power that is moving through her as we are transmitting, you see? And this would be the lesson or the thing that we would tell you that a human, we want you to embody that power that you are. We want you to stop dimming yourself, stop doubting yourself and know that this is available to all who want it. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, hey, Matt Wally also has a question, which is what is the opposite of fear? Because so many people are in that fear-based state. What is the opposite of fear? I know you touched about it a little bit, but. Most people would tell you that the opposite of fear is love. We don't really even like to use the word love necessarily because we feel everything that feels good, everything that uh, feels in positivity, uh, that is uplifting, is uh, moving away from fear or uh, uh, we are looking for a better way to describe it to you. Um, hmm. Opposite. He was asking what is opposite of fear.
fear is outcome orientated or uh, there's always a, something attached to it. Uh, we were trying to explain to you that when a person moves into fear, uh, this is going to happen. Uh, it's out of control. Let's use that uh, feeling of loss of control. That is one of the biggest factors behind fear, which a lot of humans would find uh, not necessarily the true uh, undercurrent, but it is because I, I've lost my health. It's out of my control. I've lost my money. It's out of my control. It's anything that you feel uh, as a human that you can't control. And we're here to tell you right now, uh, uh, the only control you have is right now, how you pick and choose, how you emanate. This is where your power is in the now moment, because all of that, everything that's happened in the past, everything that you viewed in your lineage and everything that runs through the veins of the blood that is from your lineage is already part of you. It's already there. So when you stand in your now moment and you start to decide right now, right here, I'm going to pick and choose how I'm going to feel about the experiences that I am in, because I know that I'm going to project out. You can actually obliterate. Here's a good thing for you to know. Uh, there might be future events that are already culminating or already coming to you based upon how you thought and feel, felt uh, in the past experiences that you've had. Uh, give you an example, perhaps you've had a rocky marriage and maybe it's going okay right now, but uh, that's in the past, you see it's still there. And though every time there's a little reverberation or a disagreement or something happens, that full wave of uh, uh, negativity that is in your universe is now coming forward or has a chance to come forward, you see. So, but if you're in your now moment, and you really start uh, disciplining yourself and picking and choosing about that relationship. I like the way this goes. I like the way this feels. This is what I'm projecting, what I'm wanting. I'm not making the one want to be different. I'm not forcing them to change. I'm not needing them to change. I'm just simply determining what I want for myself. As you do this, this energy starts to culminate and it starts to push back or push away all of the things that if you stayed in the negativity, would start to come rolling into your experience that perhaps you would not really want, you see. So we really want, we know again, we have veered off topic a little bit. So it's not really the opposite, but really what we gave you was the definition of fear is the lack of control. And the only thing you can control, so the opposite of fear in our description would be engulfing this now moment, taking control instead of feeling out of control. Being in control is what will be the opposite of fear, you see. Thank you so much for that. Just wanting to share that I personally, myself, have made a shift in my in my understanding of consciousness of this planet and knowing that I am the only one that can choose how I react. I'm the only one that can choose how I feel about a certain situation. And so living in that now moment, these words that you're saying are so true. And if everyone could just realize and understand that you are the one that is the, the master of your universe and not allowing anyone outside of you to make that choice of who you are, how you react, it, it really will change the person themselves. I just yes. want to share that. Uh, and, and, and in addition to that, uh, knowing that you're not always going to do it right, right. and that you do not move to condemnation or judgment right. when, it, when you fall off the track, as you call it, yes, yes. that you simply uh, offer some self-love to your human. Ah, you had some experiences, uh, you had some lineage perhaps, or something that occurred to you in your life that caused you to respond in a way that you're not proud of. Uh, it's okay, human, yes. Yes. I appreciate what you have done. You have let me know that uh, I really want to be this way, or I would really prefer to have this happen. But I don't dislike you for it. I don't judge you for it. I don't condemn you for it. I don't think you are it now. I just know that I know what I want now by your help of the experience that you have contributed to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the Mabeth has a question. He says, what is the purpose of having the SQE, synthetic quantum environment, technology, and past memories um, uh, determining someone's future? 
We are never fans of going back into the past, and we would not necessarily say that we are uh, 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 knowledgeable about this technology that you are referring to. We have many humans. We'll give you an example. Uh, we've had some sessions with people that have suffered a great deal in their life, uh, perhaps by abuse by their own parents. Um, many different atrocities have occurred in humans' lives that we have discussed. Robin is always in awe that we never move to uh, uh, pity. We always stay in compassion. We are uh, not discounting the experience. We are not saying it wasn't horrific or that it was not difficult to experience, but we are again standing by our word that they are the creator of it, whether they know it or not, whether it is past lineage, what they have viewed and they have no knowledge of, or whether it has happened in this life, they have to accept this fact that they are the creator of the experiences they're having. So in knowing this, in understanding this, we don't really need to go back into the bags and figure out and pull out exactly what it is that has occurred. Many humans are doing this, we would tell you in their counseling, and they're not getting better for it, they're getting worse. They're going home and fighting like cats and dogs after they have been with the counselor because they have brought up every past thing that they have not liked about the other person or what they have done wrong, they have condemned. And as you do this, the universe is the regurgitator, the regenerator of the energy that you find yourself lodged in or talking about, you see. So we are fans of moving forward. We are always moving forward. We are always telling you in the present moment that you have to decide right here, right now, how do you want the relationship to be? Even we don't care. Uh, we hate to say we don't care. We do care. But yes, in a way, we don't care. We don't want to talk about what occurred in your past or how horrific or terrible it was or what memories you have because you'll only become lodged in them. You have to understand that the universe is a generator of uh, return on emotions that it receives. It, it isn't there to sort out uh, every past transgression that you have ever had and you are not going to fix it by doing this. You are only going to be the creator of more and more of it. And those that think that this is a good remedy are just creating more jobs for people to do it, not necessarily getting anything of any value done, you see. That's what we think of that. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Monica has a question for you. Oh, hi, hello, can you hear me? Okay. <clears throat> Hey, hi, thanks for your time. Um, my question is um, <clears throat> regarding, okay, so what I see during my sleep wake state. Um, my question is, can negative frequencies take form of some sort of uh, giant insects? Because um, sometimes I see them, I'm not really sure what they are, and I don't see them all the time, but I do see them, and I wonder if it's a reflection of... Yes. We talked a little bit earlier about streams of consciousness and what's real and what isn't real uh, and where certain things are. Uh, we were talking about the astral plane. Now we're talking about insects. Yes, large insects. And we would tell you that there are those, yes, there are those in all uh, your population that believe that these things exist and therefore they exist. This is how creation works. It's how it exists is by someone's belief in it or fear of it in this term is what is the creator of that. So uh, we would tell you that there are many things that match streams of consciousness. It's not always a direct match, but it can be a vibratory match. So you yourself would have to determine you have fears, some sort of fears or some sort of angst within you that has now matched the stream of consciousness where these insects or these things that you are talking about live or exist. Do you understand what we are saying? Uh-huh. Yeah. So mm -hmm. somehow you're a match to this. So it would be for you to determine where am I a little fearful? Where am I full of angst? Where am I full of some worry? What is it in me that would allow me to drop into this stream of consciousness where these things that are not pleasant exist? Mm -hmm. How do you get out of it? Oh, you make a new one. You decide what is a good stream of consciousness I'd like to be in. Look around. There's lots of them. There's lots of good places that you can go. Oh, I love the lovely green grass and the flowers growing out there. I like nice people. I like good food to eat. Uh, I like the astral plane. Maybe that's a nice place to go. You can decide. You are the picker, the chooser, the determiner of the streams of consciousness that you will join others in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you don't like something that you are seeing, then choose something that you want to see and say, Thanks for showing me that I inadvertently lowered my vibratory level and dropped into an insectal stream of consciousness. I'm coming up now. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling happy. I'm not depressed. I'm not having any anxiety. And pretty soon your consciousness starts to rise. And those insects don't appear there. They just disappear. Okay. Wow, that was very helpful. Thank you. We hit the mark, didn't we? 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So Do not much. like to go into great detail in a group because we're not here to out anyone at all. But we like to give you enough information so you can correct what it is you are struggling with. And you can pop yourself out of that stream of consciousness by taking a check around and a look around of where you might be dipping into a lower level way of thinking. Okay. Yeah. Good day. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are welcome. Suzanne has a question for you. Hi, thank you for coming. You are welcome. I love your energy. I like the stream. Mm. It's very nice, very nice. Oh, thank you. So uh, I'm in the process of creating my world. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, what is it that uh, I or others could do to maybe uh, set up the next steps. For example, right now I'm very content. I, I'm flowing. I like the things that I run into, um, but I also don't have, I mean, I don't even have a plan for a vacation, for example. And um, so sometimes when I start to think about things that I want to do, you know, I have that, um, what is it called? Uh, like, you know, I'm my own worst enemy. So I want to do this and I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I have a dog mm -hmm. or something like that. Yes. This is something that we covered a little earlier. I don't know whether you were privy to it or not, but we'll go into it once again, because it is pertinent for people to hear. Uh, when you ask yourself or you want something, as you are saying, we, we did a recording actually this morning on our podcast about this very topic that you are to ask for the thing that you want. And then you are to accept that as a human and as a God, you have received what it is you are asking for the moment you ask for it. And now you are to go about living in a joyful way and allowing this alignment, because that's what's going to happen. You're going to align in your vibratory level to all that is where this exists. And then you're going to bring it into form upon the earth plane, you see. But as you start to look at things that, where is it? This is what we talked about. Uh, I, I, I'm, there's no trip being planned. I don't have the money. Now we're getting into the reason. And where's the reason coming from? It's coming from the high part of you. It's letting you know. You have some uh, concerns or worries that you won't have enough money. You're fearful about it. You, you don't think it's possible. You don't have belief in it. And we're going to tell you, if you don't believe something, you ain't getting it. It's just how it is. You see, this is how, what a human's work is. It's not that you're not worthy. It's not that you're not a God. It's not that you're not capable. But if you can't shift into the belief that this is possible and stop asking where something is when you've already asked for it. The universe is going to continue to generate to you. Why are you asking for it? Because the high part of you already knows you're not in alignment. So it's going to give you the reasons. You don't have enough time. You don't have enough money. It's going to give you all of the concrete reasons. And then now you as the lowly human, as the disconnected emotive human that you are, you're going to believe that and align to that. And then you become lowered in your vibratory level, unable to attract what it is you want to attract to yourself because you've decided you're not worthy of it, not capable of it. You're the one doing it. Did that answer your question? Yes, yes, I am sorry. I we don't mean to be harsh. No, but no, we are I'm, true. I'm good with this. I'm good with this. Yes, I, I, we want you to get what you want to get. And there's no way to right. get it without letting you know why you're not getting it. Right, right. You have to believe. You have to say, I want a vacation. And here's where I want to go. This is why people have vision boards. You don't have to do it. But in your case, maybe it's not a bad idea to it. I want a vacation. I'm going to put up a few pictures about it. I can have it. I'm worthy of it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not going to ask when it's going to happen. I don't have to set a date right now. I don't have to worry about having enough money for it because I know if I stay in alignment, somebody will give me a trip. It's going to happen. It's how it happens. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. you are not the orchestrator. You humans don't understand that this stream, this flow of life is living itself. You don't have to do anything except for desire, emote, and believe. And all the things will just come floating right by and you can just pick them up. Oh, there's the job I wanted. 
There's the spouse I wanted. There's the opportunity I was looking for. Here it floats, it's floating by me. I don't have to, I don't have to scream and holler and wonder where it is. You can do that. And let me tell you, the answer you get is the truth. I don't believe in myself. I don't believe it's possible. I don't think I have enough education. I don't think I'm young enough, old enough, strong enough, big enough, smart enough. Whatever it is that you hold within you will be echoed out to you in the thoughts that come to you. This is not a negative as you call it. This is your truth that you are aligning to. We want you to be so grateful for it. We want you to notice the unbelievable perfection of yourself that you can have this guidance that you call negativity, but it's really everything you hold within you, you see. And when you put the light on it, and they say, talk about shining the light on something, that's the awareness. It's no longer unconscious. And you can look at it and say, I don't have to believe that. I don't have to have that belief or accept that. I'm going to take that out. You see, you have this choice. You're the picker, chooser, the decider, the sovereign creator. You don't have to change other people. You don't have to make them believe what you believe. You don't have to tell them they're racist. You just have to not be racist yourself. You just have to believe what you believe. You just have to show them how you are in alignment. And they will rub up against you. They will want to be with you, near you. They will want to bask in the light of you. You don't have to chase anybody down. You don't have to reprimand people. You don't have to do anything except for be the creator you are. That's all you have to do. It's really that simple, people. Thank you so much. That I really enjoyed your last thought there. Um, I'm a teacher and I'm working hard to feel that way and be that way all the time. I'm working on it. It's, it's coming. There's no work to do in alignment. Look where you love. Talk about what you love. Spend things, uh, time on things you love. Be, live a life of love, of joy, of happiness, of gratitude, of appreciation. Get into the flow state. There ain't no work there. Everything will come floating by you. All of the things that you're wanting to change will automatically just be filtered into you with no effort on your part whatsoever. And this is, as a God, your birthright, your worthiness. This is what you have available to you. You see? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that is the embodiment of um, you emanating your light? Because so many times we hear, you know, um, be the light. I mean, like, it's that when we, you emanate that positivity, that strength, that love, that when you emanate that, you don't have to say anything. Yes. Uh, humans like to call it a light, but we would tell you when Robin had her Kundalini rising and maybe anyone else that has experienced this, she was struck by lightning. And much of what a human is, is electrical, whether you know it or not. It is a charge of electrical energy. It is part of it, you see. And so uh, in knowing this, as you become a conduit for more energy, you become more and more powerful, more and more influential more and more able to flow that high voltage energy from all that is into the human form that you are having, you see. That's how it works. So plug in. That's why when you do a meditation, they tell you to take the top of your head off and imagine that you're plugging it into a light uh, socket because you are plugging in to high voltage energy that's going to come down and illuminate you. Thank you very much for that. Um, a YouTube question from Nancy Pants says, I keep getting a key message, seeing a key or the word key. Can you tell me what this repeating message means? What is the word again? Key. K-E-Y. K-E-Y. Hmm. We tell humans all the time, and she would be the determiner of whether this is the key or not. But there is a key that opens 
every human. And it's different for all humans. It's one of the reasons when uh, people ask us to learn how to channel or, or do they have to do this or do that? Uh, we would tell you that, of course, you can try practices that other people had success with. But really, it's what's coming to you. It's the things that are laid before you personally that are the key to you, you see. If you are drawn to chakra work, that's the key you should use. If you are drawn to uh, silent retreats, put that key in that door. If you are drawn to meditation, that's a good key for you, you see. And there is a way that a human, uh, we talk about divina divination tools. They say, people ask us, do they work? And we tell you again, if you believe in them, and if you insert your energy and your power into them, absolutely they will respond to the request that you give them. It is the same thing, you see. So we don't know this person that has asked this question, but it is our belief that she is to follow her own path, whatever it is. There is no right way. There's no wrong way. There's no shoulds. All of you will have a way, something you're drawn to. And you might meet another person on your path that's doing something and they share it and you think, I like that. I'm going to use that key. And it might be the right key for you. But then there are humans that lose sight of the fact that there is a key that's theirs. And they start to think everyone else's key is theirs. And so we want you to really have this knowing, this understanding, this trust, this ability to let this process very naturally unfold, much like you did as you went through your adolescence, that it will happen. And what is appropriate, what is needed, and the right timing will all come to you when it is the correct timing. Thank you so much for that. That is for so, you know, just for so many people. Thank you. You're welcome. Joan has another question for you. Greetings. Um, my question is, uh, how many times we need to go through uh, the Kundalini? Hmm. Are you talking about in this lifetime or are you asking if you have to do it in other lifetimes once you've done it? Uh, this lifetime or do I, <laughs> I don't know if I done it last, I mean, my last time. My last life. Once you have awakened the Kundalini completely, it is uh, you are not uh, having to do it in the next life. Yes, it is yours. It's done. Uh, if you had a partial rising or a veering off rising, which actually Robin thinks she did. She thinks there were maybe some blockages uh, in the heart center. She did not feel the full rise through the throat and up uh, through the top right away. And then prior to that, uh, not prior, but after that, two years later, the energy descended from the top and then opened the rest of the centers coming down that way because it had trouble making its way this way, you see. So uh, if you had a full awakening, there's a knowing. We really want you to get this because nobody can tell you this. Nobody knows this, but the self, you know it. Robin knew by the turmoil that she experienced and by the way that her body felt that she had a partial rising or what they would even call a Kundalini emergency. It wasn't that big of an emergency. She just accepted it and dealt with it. It was difficult for a couple of years, but it righted itself. Eventually it will right itself. And it came down through the top of her crown and it went through the third eye and, and through the throat. And she felt the flush. Uh, there'll be like a hot lava also that pours through each one of the energy centers. So uh, let's just go over it briefly for you because it seems as though you are a little bit uh, in questioning and hopefully it won't be boring for the listeners. Yes, we're gonna do it fast. So the Kundalini erupts, she rises. And there is immediate spinning, zzz, zzz, hundreds of honeymoon birds. You can hear them in your ears before anything happens. And then that kundalini uncoils. And then it starts to rise through the centers. And if the centers that are all are blocked at all, which many of them will be in people, unless you are uh, someone that's been on your knees for 20 years, uh, they're going to rise up through those centers. And as they hit the center, any emotion or anything that is in its way, she's going to devour it. She's going to pound her way through it. Sometimes even by backing up and coming again, you will definitely feel it. It will be as though there is something inside of your body that is puncturing those centers, you see. And then as it gets through that one, it goes to the next one. And then it goes to the next one. And if it, uh, then it, it makes its full ascent all the way up. Guess what? There's a full body orgasm at the top. Every one of the centers at once. And that is when it is complete. 
And then there is a whooshing sound as it comes back down to rest at the base of the spine. And it feels as though a hot lava is pouring through each one of your centers, not burning, like a warm child being born as it draws itself back down through cleansing and burning through anything that's left behind. And then it rests again at the base of the spine. This is a full awakening. This is what you would hear. Uh, it would sound like a freight train. It could sound like a thousand hummingbirds. Uh, there will be physical slight pain, not bad pain, but slight pain as the centers are punctured. Uh, sorry for the graphic detail, but much to be the same as when a woman has sex for the first time. There's something broken. It is a actual breaking through of the center that will occur. And this is the uh, uh, most graphic or uh, complete description that we can give you of what it is you would feel sensationally as this energy makes its way through your body, you see. I feel it physically, girl. Um, okay. What, what is the question? Uh, so the, the energy, you feel it physically because I, I mostly feel the energy on my back. So that's why I'm questioning all those what, what uh, I was- Kundalini feeling. can be stirring, yes? And you can yeah. feel it on your back. And there are many that have that. But there will be a time when there will be a full thunderous awakening. And then once she has awakened and goes back down to the base of the spine, then this process of clearing and cleansing the body, it could go on for years. Uh, and there will be times when you are very drawn to sit in quiet. And this is when we spoke about the Kriyas and when we spoke about uh, different emotions, you will have thoughts, you will have, uh, you will relive perhaps experiences that have been lodged in your body that have now been released. Don't put a lot of effort or time into that. Just let them go. You might have some recall of painful experiences because they're coming up again as this energy makes its way through your body. But if this is not a place to dwell on, uh, to quickly pass. The less attachment you have to this process, the more thorough and the better it will work for you. But uh, uh, we want you to move more into trust. We want we know what your intention is. You want this energy uh, moving through your body and you want it activated. Then this is where your focus should be. It should not be on, uh, is it done? Is it okay? Is it coming? Simply put your focus where you want to and expect it to happen and it will. Okay. All right. I want more questions. Um, how, does, how do I know that I'm connected or uh, how do we know that we are connected to our higher self? Do you believe you have ever felt that? Yes. Why are you asking us that? Well, I, I you think that there's going to be a, a loud horn go off or, as we said, a dresser tip over or something might fly through the room in order to uh, notify you that high self is now engaged itself. It's with you every time you have an emotion. Do you feel, woman? Do you have feelings? Yes. This is the high part of you communicating with you, through you. Every time you feel it's it's there. This is your communication with, with yourself. And let, let's talk about this for a moment because it's important that you've brought this up. Humans think that that person made me feel that way. No, they didn't. Every emotion you ever have is between you and you. So every thought you're having in this moment and a charge of energy comes to you that doesn't feel good, the way you're thinking right now is not in alignment to the high part of you and its goal for what it has set for you. You will feel negativity when you are pulling away from yourself and you will feel very connected, very good. When you said, how do I know? You'll feel good, that's how you're gonna know. If you don't feel good, you're pulling away. And nine times out of 10, when you're not feeling good, you're in an emotive state, you're unconscious and you're in your human. And your high self says, I'm out. I'm not connecting to that. It's too low. Let me know when you're coming back up and I'll come back to you. I'll meet you. This is what happens. So when you ask us, how do I know if I'm connected? You know when you feel good and you know when you don't feel good that it's out the door. It's moving away from you because of the way you're thinking, not because of the nasty clerk, not because of the husband that irritated you, not because the mother-in-law did something she shouldn't do. That's not why you're disconnected because you're thinking the mother-in-law is bad, because you're condemning the husband, because the way you're thinking, we don't care whether it's true or false. The way you're emanating is going to bring you something you don't want. That's the communication you're getting 
from the high part of you in the motions you feel. I see. Could be a new concept for some of you. You think you're justified. He's a bad person. My mother-in-law is a pain in the neck. The universe doesn't care. Let's give her more bad people. Let's give her more irritating things that are like the way her husband does. Let's fill her full of this negativity until she can no longer hold it anymore and has to recognize it and move away from it so that I can get her the life that I want her to get. Beautiful. Is there any doubt now whether you have had connection or not? Uh, I'm just wondering because I feel my, my heart so much love and so happy all the time. So that's why. Well, then you're in connection. Not feeling so good. Not so much. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. The Mavis have, uh, has a question. The higher your vibration, the better you can manifest something. Is it true that if your vibration is too high, people lose the desire to manifest anything? Hmm. Oh, they, here, we tell people all the time, uh, when you live, we say, for starters to manifest, we say, well, get in the flow state, get in this happy state, get in this complimenting, uh, not criticizing, uh, aligned state. And yes, you will be able to manifest more. But what happens is they become so happy without the things that they have been asking for that, yes, they get to a point where they don't really care that much about them because they've learned how to live. They've learned how to emanate as a creator in the form that they are in. And so in this place, uh, they don't feel they need it as much. So that would be a correct statement. We're not telling you you can't have it. We're not telling you you're not spiritual if you want it. Certainly you can have it if you would like it. There's no condemning. There's no right and wrong. All it is about is what makes you feel best. But oftentimes when people realize how to be the master, what have they realized? They've realized that how they think matters, how they feel matters, and they have now mastered it. And because of that, they feel so wonderful. And now all this stuff is coming to them and think, well, it's great, but I feel wonderful whether I have it or not because I've mastered the idea of how to feel good, you see. Thank you so much for that. Um, I have one question in YouTube. Space Girl says, what is the best way to correct thought patterns to experience to experiencing loss of loved ones through death and change? Uh, the reason, believe it or not, that you are having the negative thoughts or you're having the griefful periods that you are having is because you think the life is over, the life is ended, and that it's somehow been obliterated from your experience. And we know that there is a, obviously, uh, there is a loss or a period of time. And so you are to soothe your human. Again, it has had an experience. It has lost something that is very uh, dear to it. It's uh, close to it. It is something that it interacts with every day. And so certainly there is going to be this period. And so uh, the best thing that you can do is with anything that's persistent in your experience is not deny it. You have to soothe your human. You have to say how grateful you are for the experience that it had in this loss that it is experiencing. And that because of the loss, what you have learned is how much you love them, how much you miss them, that they are now gone, how much you would love to have something or someone in your life that would be similar or same to what it is that you have lost. So these are all the things that are born of that. And you always want to go to when you are suffering, what is it that I am suffering from? I am missing them. I am lonely. I am needing uh, compassion. I am needing love or whatever it is that you are now minus now that you have lost this thing that you felt was the source of what was filling you. But we are telling you right now, and, and we know that it is not easy in your human form, but that is a spot that one can fill for yourself when you adopt this way of thinking, this adjustment in your thinking that uh, you can have another mate. You can call to yourself uh, uh, something in your life that will be fulfilling, that will uh, fill perhaps the spot of the loss that you have had. This is not always the case, uh, we are telling you, but it is really adjustment in your way of thinking. We would use the example of, uh, there is an old story of a man that lost his son. It was a terrible loss. And he was invited to a wedding that uh, was in days of the loss. No one expected him to come. And certainly no one expected him to come in the form that he came in. He came dressed, he came dancing, he came in merriment. No one could understand it. Finally, someone said to him, how is it that you can show up at this place after the great loss that you endured. And he said, I decided that I am the picker and the chooser and the decider of how I would feel. And I can decide to feel good today or I can wait two years. 
And to be quite honest, I don't have that long of a life and I've chosen today instead, you see. This is a choice that all you humans have. No one knows when the number will be called. Nobody knows when the life will end. Your life could end tomorrow. It could end in 10 minutes, you see. And so the length of time that you spend in your misery, in your grief, it is a decision whether you know it or not. And you have the ability to decide, to choose, to pick how it is that you will spend your time here. Beautiful words. Thank you so much. Uh, the stone that Robin is wearing, uh, Athena, she's chosen to wear, what is it and how does it assist her? Yes, uh, uh, it is uh, a green, Robin is uh, trying to uh, bear in mind, we must rely upon her for the vocabulary. She's not pulling it right now. It was a gift given to her when we entered uh, her, yes. She was a little shaky in her confidence. It was uh, difficult for her to uh, speak in front of a group. She was a little afraid of how it was going to work out. And her lovely daughter-in-law gave it to her and said that this would be something that would assist her in her throat chakra. So she has worn it uh, for that reason. We Thank wish you. we could give you the name, but Robin is not remembering it. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we have time for one more question. Lilypad, um, you have the last question. Uh, thank you. Um, I was wondering why I, um, I've been having too much, like uh, maybe I call it static energy uh, in my body. Even last night before I went to bed, well, not last night, but before, I don't know, I went for a walk and then I was, I remember someone told me go by a tree. Yes, yes. And I did. So, I say, well, okay, so it's not going to happen in bed. This sparkles energy. Yes. So I wake up and it still happens. So I'm, what advice would you give me? Or was, is that, is that static? Why I have so much this? Static Are you a, a meditator or one that meditates uh, at all or frequently? Um, I, I try to be more disciplined on meditating. I, I do meditate kind of meditate I don't even know if I'm doing right but I, I, I'll try do you take time in silence or in practice or in intention silence or do you do uh, anything in worship at all no I just breathe in breathe out and relax and sometimes I fall it most of the time I fall asleep maybe just to relax yes but are, are you ever intending uh to do any type of spiritual practice that's our question do you ever do any no so are, are you thinking about spirituality? Are you involved in it in any way? Well, and, well, I do just, um, I want to improve myself, better myself, but yes. I don't join in any group. I'm by myself. Yes. And I kind of, my own, trying to do my own guidance. Uh, maybe I should. We are uh, seeing, yes, of what the advice we would give you. The reason we asked about the meditation, because many people do not realize the importance of grounding. And when we gave you the example that you are actually being filled uh, or uh, it'd be like plugging a toaster into a, a, a voltage uh, meter that was not accepting that level of voltage, you see. And so as you start to, uh, people who do a lot of meditating, and this actually occurred, uh, happened to Robin many, many years ago. She was meditating an hour a day uh, and it's a, a practice she has now given up, we would say, but uh, she had done a lot of meditating and she, she's a person that uh, doesn't like to bother with the details. She didn't bother with the circling with the yellow light. She didn't bother with the grounding, you see. And she kept meditating uh, unknown to her uh, as one is meditating or doing any spiritual practice. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a spiritual practice this can happen involuntarily without your knowledge dependent upon the high part of yourself whether it is wanting to uh engage you or to get you uh, moving on your spiritual way giving you a push yes but what happened to robin in this process and it's important for people to know is she began to get uh very frazzled uh many heart palpitations uh short of breath couldn't understand actually drove her to the doctor uh she ended up getting electrocardiogram and they said that her heart was uh like racing out of control. So they wanted to put her on a heart medication of all things. And she was probably uh, in her early forties, you see. And so very shortly after that, uh, she was lucky enough to come across someone who remedied right away what the problem was. And they asked if she had been grounding during meditation. She had not. He said, put those pills away right away. You don't need them. Start grounding. And as soon as she did, all of this uh, energy, all of this heart racing, all of this, uh, people get very frazzled. They will get very scattered uh, acting when they are meditating and not grounding. So we would tell you that the person telling you to go up against a tree was good advice to you because it's a very grounding uh, area or 
place for you to be. And so we would recommend to you that you try uh, taking your shoes off. You don't have to go outside. Many people think they have to get in the grass. You can simply do this through your intent, through your imagination. You imagine the chakras, and there are chakras also, two brown ones, on the bottom of the balls of your feet. You imagine them opening up and sending down like tree roots all the way down to the center of the earth where you reach the stone or the middle of the earth. And you imagine that uh, those uh, chakras grabbing on and rooting into the earth. And now you draw that uh, grounded power up from the earth into your body. This would be a good practice for you to try. And we think that you would have good results with it. All right. Thank you. So is para is a static energy? Oh. Yes, it is for uh, this energy that you are experiencing. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, we've come to the end of our time. Um, thank you so much. And thank you for really helping humanity um, really to see exactly who we can be in this life right now. Thank you for all your, the words that you've brought. And I know it's going to help a lot of people become who they really need to become in themselves. Yes. Uh, we've enjoyed this interaction more than words can say. And we want you to know that although we are grateful for your words, that we are the ones helping you, you are coming through you to you, and you are the ones that are rising in your own consciousness, in your own way, in your own doing. You see, we are nothing more than the bringers or the connectors or uh, the light turner honors, yes, of those of you that are already lit. Thank you so much. Good day. I know your words have affected me, so thank you. Good day. Hi, guys. Hi. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What a wonderful, wonderful session. Um, how can people get in touch with you? How can they connect with you? Um, I have a website and it's www.athenaintruth.com and there is a booking service on there for sessions. Um, I do regular podcasts. Those are free. I put those out whenever they come. And uh, I also do uh, YouTube's. Uh, on my own YouTube channel. Everything is under Athena and Truth, the podcast, um, the uh, YouTubes are all under the same name. So I'm pretty easy to find that way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, our announcements, um, again, uh, we are going to be scheduling our next class. If you have any interest, please send information to classes at hookalo.org. I'll get the information out to you of what it is that uh, we are going to do for our next class. Um, we'd like to close with some blessings. Is there anybody that would like to do a blessing? Yana, would you like to start? Oh, you need to unmute. Sorry. Tortikanaka aish tenege or to or tenaka an teatashto oe. I nego a torto o henaka aiteka aiteke no cotust. We get tort o neka ante ataka. Oi oi orke, cassiana can the kaite neke ete oi. Uh, Wendy, go ahead. Thank you. This blessing will be for peace and understanding of these messages coming from the um, Archangel Razia. Antu tu kuira nara tahiri tikiira pahel tu kuira mahaira pahie niu tu kuira patat tu kuira mara atat tu kuira na tat tu kuira tat tu kuira mahiri tu tu kuira pat tu kuira ma tat tu kuira tat tu kuira tat tu kuira ro ro tu kuira pat tu kuira na pat tu kuira tu 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 kuira ma ishikruanya tu kuira pat tu kuira tatatu. Blessings. Joan. A chiku ai kiki tu sushi ka ali kutu kutu kits ki ka ali kili kunu kutsu kulika iski iskala hali kuls kis kis ka hali utu tuna ka eko kulikits kola ali kutu. Namaste. Okay, everyone, uh, Jim will be back next week, as well as Krishna Priya hosting. And um, I look forward to seeing everyone next week. <laughs>